the record. We happen now, the referendum's come up because this is one occasion when we don't have that. Um, Labour, lead, Labour leadership, leave that one. AB and tactical voting. Um, the um, of, uh, tactical voting is always possible. If there are more than two options, more than two candidates, it doesn't matter what the voting system is, there's always a way of voting tactically. And it's not in the benign second preference way that Ben is describing. Um, it is a little bit complicated to describe. Never mind, you can read all about it in my book. But think of, <laughs> um, there are several examples. If you can um, hold it in your head, think of the case where you've got, um, uh, you've got Labour winning and the um, Conservatives second and the Liberals third, close call for second place. The Conservative voter doesn't want a Labour Member of Parliament. What's going to happen? You go along and vote one Conservative, two Liberal Democrat. The Liberal Democrat gets eliminated, and let us say, roughly speaking, the Liberal Democrats would vote split, Labour and Conservative, so Labour wins. I've got a better plan for you, is that Conservative? Go along and vote for the Liberal Democrat to get the Conservative in third place and eliminated, because the Conservative voters will then transfer to the Liberal Democrat with greater predominance than the Liberal Democrats do to the Conservative. So that's how you vote tactically under AV to achieve your desired outcome, which is, in this example, Labour not winning. Perfectly ordinary case of tactical voting, a little bit more complicated to work out, but it is not true, despite the Yes Campaign's um, website of a few weeks ago, uh, it is not true that there is no scope for uh, tactical voting in AV. It also ought to be noted, I think, that um, there can be, and I won't attempt to construct it for you, but there can be truly bizarre examples. And the gentleman in the middle was um, pointing at one. It can't be that the candidate who comes bottom ends up winning, as Ben said. It can be that the candidate who comes second bottom ends up winning, though. The bottom one is eliminated. Votes transfer to the second bottom one, who passes one of the others. That other is eliminated, transfers to the originally second bottom. You can have some truly bizarre results like that. You can also have cases where the tactical voting extends to the extent that you can make your favoured candidate, the one you want to win, have a better chance by voting for someone else. Uh, and indeed, I can convince you of this. Back to my example earlier on, Labour, Conservative liberal case, those Conservatives have reason to vote for the um, Liberal. Well, guess what? The Labour people have a reason to vote for the Conservative. Because the Labour voters keep the Conservative in second place, so the Liberal Democrats eliminated and split, and Labour ends up winning. So here's a species of tactical voting. But it's not the this isn't tactical voting under first past the post where you just take a reason, you use your vote intelligently to achieve the best available result in your constituency, vote for your second choice. That strikes me as quite benign. Here's a species of tactical voting where you're more likely to get your candidate elected by voting for someone else. Now, if tactical voting really is a problem, then that ought to worry people. You ought to be concerned about a system that promotes that kind of bizarre behavior. Um, and somebody raised the question of people getting elected on 28%. Well, yes, but look, one, look at the macroscopic effects. We're electing a parliament, not individuals. Don't, uh, it's the primary thing is not that we're electing constituency people, we're electing parliament. Don't forget that. Uh, but anyway, any system you name, there are bizarre results that can occur. Is it great news that a 28% person gets elected? Well, no, but is that the end of the world? That person might well have been elected under AV, remember? There's nothing in that data that tells you they wouldn't. Anyway, they got elected, and I can give you the AV cases where you know, the second bottom person gets elected, and why is that any good either? These sorts of silly cases come up in any system you like, guaranteed. A political science, number of crunching people have worked over all this, Every system has these bizarre possibilities. Shouldn't worry about that particular one. Okay, if we could take 
few more questions, um, and then uh, we'll add some final comments. Um, um, I have a couple of questions before we have a further. Um, could you maybe expand on your uh, idea of the market that is a bit debated and pretty much uh, every round we've had so far, and I, from what I understand, please do correct me if I'm wrong, um, you would say that uh, a government with the national majority of 30%, or a government that gets 30% of, uh, and then actually has a majority in parliament, um, is more democratic then, for example, if you look at the continent, um, the consensus government, we have coalitions, which are, I don't think, at all less effective than the one-party government. If anything, they are, they are what uh, democracy is maybe more about consensus. And that's, for example, uh, the politicians of grand coalitions of uh, some like Germany or Austria, which are just as structured. But if you have uh, the driver center left uh, government, they do get things done, and I think that you actually have more than 50% of the actual vote represented, I still feel that's more democratic and um, more of a modern notion of democracy. Thank you. And at the back? Um, <coughs> in this debate, I think we will have further for the people who are voting and so that I think we will see the answer. Well, thank you for inviting me to tell you more about my vision of democracy. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we got? Um, Not there, too long. There, no, no, there's a great deal that um, could be said about that. Um, and there are competing visions of democracy. There's no doubt about that. And the sort of vision that says, well, we all vote for the person we most like and then leave it to them to form the government um, is not definitely undemocratic, but I would say it's an impoverished democracy because it takes away from the voters the power to, in particular, throw out their government. The voters have a vote who can be proportional to your heart's content, have a proportional parliament, and then that's it. Over the composition of the government, the voters have no practical control. That's decided by the politicians. Now, to me, that's a poor vision of democracy. I believe that the voters decide who the government is. That's the important thing about it. And first past the post delivers that better than any alternative that's on the agenda. We can go further down this road. One, I would be wanting to think about what is it that in a in the, in the pure case of a two-party system, which of course we don't have, but it's something to think about, what sort of behaviour do we get from the parties? Uh, one vision of it is the parties are sort of stuck in ideological positions and they just bash each other from there. Um, but it doesn't seem to me that that's realistic. It seems to me that they're not stuck in ideological positions at all. And they hunt the voters. The parties move to find where the voters are. So although you end up with a sort of yes or no decision on whether you keep your government or not, you're taking a yes or no decision between two groups that are very much seeking to find the consensus position amongst the people. They're driven that way. There's a great example of it from um, a couple of months ago where, um, what about this for a piece of class warfare from two ideologically and camp parties. Uh, David Cameron said the right thing to do was eliminate child benefit for um, people earning more than 44,000, well, one person, you know, for high earners, roughly, to eliminate child benefit for it, uh, for them. Um, Ed Miliband, what did he want to do? He wanted to extend child benefit even to millionaires. Okay? Go figure. If that's two parties in and camped ideological positions, it takes some working out. What it looks to me like is two parties reaching out as widely as they can to as many people as possible, not at all just appealing to their own um, group. And let's not forget, while we're on this theme, we, we have a coalition um, which, in a way, you can say they've got support of more than 50% of the vote, 
In another way, you very well might not, because as a matter of fact, nobody voted for the coalition. That's another way of saying the government's determined by the politicians. But there were candidate governments you could vote for, and if one of them had won, then you'd say, well, that was the one that won. But no, what we've got is somebody nobody voted for. Further reform like compulsory voting? Well, I don't know. Um, what about further reform like another referendum? What about are the proportional representation people actually going to take off these AV clothes should they win? And then say, oh, well, of course, we don't want this at all. And by the way, um, we won't have to wait long anyway before there's another coalition government. And there'll be those lovely little Democrats there in it. And what do you think the, um, what do you think the price will be this time? I don't know. It doesn't seem to me that there's any um, very clear determination to end the matter by winning an AV vote. So I would have thought there's every prospect of more, although it would be further changes in the voting system I would anticipate coming along. Um, uh, yes, the question, how democratic is it when you can elect a government or a government can be formed on little more than 30% of the vote? Well, I mean, that happens in some systems. It happens in our system. It happens in the American system. It happens on the first past the post, and I don't think it is particularly democratic, but I think there are arguments for... Uh, having strong government as well. I think the arguments are finely balanced, but I, I mean, I would in simply invite you to ask yourselves whether you think Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, and the Scandinavian countries, which all have some form of uh, proportional voting system, are better or worse governed than Britain, uh, and all have been traditionally. How well have these t countries done over the last few decades uh, with these terrible coalitions as James refers them to. Actually, I think they've been pretty well governed, pretty successful uh, modern uh, democracies that have had a level of consensual politics in their politics, which I think is mature and uh, rational. Uh, and I think all too often in this country, under our system, we've lurched from one government to another, uh, with one government undoing some of the good things that the previous government did because it wants to define itself against it. Uh, rather than there being any sensible continuity. But anyway, that's, that's a separate uh, debating point. I mean, James said that you know, we have a two-party system. We actually don't have a two-party system. We had a two-party system in the 1950s. In the 1950s, 97% of people in this country voted either Conservative or Labour. In the last election, fewer than 66% did. Uh, we don't have a two-party system. We've got Greens, we've got Lib Dems, we've got Scottish Welsh Nationalists, we've got the Northern Ireland parties. And first past the post, does not adequ adequately, in my view, respond to that new reality of a much more plural uh, uh, politics with parties apart from the traditional two uh, parties who used to dominate. And then finally, could this be the beginning of further reform? Well, I hope it's part of a much more comprehensive and radical political and constitutional reform package, including an elected House of Lords. It's absolutely ludicrous that we still seem to be the only country in the world that thinks, the democratic country in the world that thinks it's acceptable that we have an appointed uh, upper house, and various other reforms like that. But what I would say to people, particularly those people who may be here tonight who don't feel sure about AV, but don't like first past the post, or maybe would like to see a more proportional system, that if, if the no vote wins in May, uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, we're not going to get another bite at this cherry. If the British people vote to keep first past the post, that means any change in our electoral system is off the agenda. And I know my own party is not going to revisit this. It's not going to have an appetite for it. However, if the yes vote wins, and we do get AV, and people quite like it, people get used to change, this happened in New Zealand, they had a referendum, they voted for reform, they quite liked it, and then they voted for a further reform. So I think it is possible that those of you who, who want to see a, a, a more proportional system, uh, you're not going to get it if we vote no, you might get it uh, if we vote yes. So don't make the best the enemy of the good in this referendum. Okay, um, now we're just going to uh, 